Ladies and gentlemen, the Railroad Hour. And from Hollywood, here comes our star-studded show train. Tonight, your railroads through the Association of American Railroads present the rollicking musical success, Hit the Deck, starring the host of our series, Gordon McRae, a very charming guest, Miss Frances Langford, and featuring a great cast of Hollywood players. The show train is brought to you by the American Railroads, the same railroads that bring you most of the food you eat, the clothes you wear, the fuel you burn, and all the other things you use in your daily life. And now, here is Gordon McRae. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I don't need to tell you that the tune Carmen Dragon and the orchestra are playing is Hallelujah from tonight's show, Hit the Deck, a musical that was a tremendous success on Broadway, on the screen, and still plays in theaters all over the country. Sometimes I'm happy. Yes, Sometimes I'm Happy is from Hit the Deck, too. As well as many other hits you'll hear tonight, sung by lovely Francis Langford, myself, and our choir under the direction of Norman Lubov. So, try and picture me in a sailor uniform with one of those little white hats perched in the back of my head, because I play the part of a gob named Bill Schmidt, who falls in love with Francis Langford. I mean, Lulu Martin. But suppose I let Elvia Allman tell you the story, because she's Lulu's Aunt Lavinia and remembers a lot more about it than I do. Join the Navy, where the seagulls live. Join the Navy and see the world. Oh, baloney. But you know, every time I hear that tune, it takes me back to the day Lulu and I were standing on the dock in San Diego, just outside her coffee shop, listening to a gob named Bill Smith making a recruiting speech. But since I knew Lulu couldn't join the Navy, it didn't worry me too much. But I wasn't counting on a little guy named Dan Cupid. Okay, men, who's going to be the first to sign up? Step right up and get your papers. Uncle Sammy puts the bills. Join the Navy and see the world. All soda clerks and them that works and loading crates and washing plates and those that's driving trucks and every tailor should be a sailor and sail away. If you've the nerve, it's great to serve, so quit your job and be a gob and go with Uncle Sam down to Havana or to Savannah or Frisco Bay. From Canada down to the Philippines or any foreign shore, there's always a girl who was left behind who's been behind before. It may be Lou or Sue, it's all the same to you. From China to Peru, you've nothing to lose. Join the Navy, where the seas all wavy. Join the Navy and see the world. You can earn while you learn in the Navy, where a pal is a pal and hard boiled. Join the Navy, where the life is gravy, though your hair be straight accord. When a guy is in his twenties or his thirties, it's a job to swap a deck where all the doid is. But a job is always ace is where a strike is. Join the Navy and see the Wonderful. Who said that? I did. Lulu Martin, you've been running a coffee shop on the dock too long to be falling for sailors. What's wrong with sailors? Now, don't get me started. Maybe Little Red Riding Hood did meet the first wolf, but that wolf was just a schmo compared to the ones who hang around here. <laughs> but this one's different. Huh, there's your Aunt Lavinia. What's his name? Mr. Smith. Smith? <laughs> he sure didn't knock himself out thinking up that one. His name is Smith, Aunt Lavinia, and he... Oh, here he comes now. Be nice to him, Aunt Lavinia. Why, why there's two of them deck swabbers coming this way. Lulu Martin, have you been learning about sailors' maneuvers? Hiya, Lulu. 
I want you to meet a pal of mine. How do you do? I'm Matt Smith, seaman first class. <laughs> and I'm Lulu's Aunt Lavinia. Cook third class, chaperone second class, and bouncer first class. <laughs> Hello to Aunt Lavinia. Aunt Lavinia helps me run my coffee shop. Well, now, ain't that nice? Hey, Lulu, want to go for another walk with me tonight, huh? Well, oh, I... Oh, uh... so you're the reason Lulu was out so late last night. Yeah. Did we make too much noise when we got back? The noise was all right. It was the silence that worried me. <laughs> what were you talking about? Oh, nothing. Took you a mighty long time to say it. We didn't talk much. Yeah, we were just thinking most of the time. <laughs> what were you thinking about? Don't answer that. <laughs> Won't you boys stay for dinner? Uh, I can, but uh, Matt can't. He's got to clear up the groban on the what's after recruiting duty. Huh, sounds like mighty hard work. Oh, yeah, yeah, it is. It's no kidding. Well, I, uh, I got to shove off. I'll stop by for you when I get finished there, Bill. To see you. Okay, Matt. <laughs> Come on in the coffee shop, Mr. Smith. Suits me. Aunt Lavinia will dish up dinner right away. Here you are, Mr. Smith. Sit right up to the counter and make yourself at home. Hmm. Sure smells nice in here. You mean it did. Huh? Well, I'll go get the chow. Where's your home, Mr. Smith? Oh, I haven't got one. A couple of distant relatives here and there, but nothing to call home. Bet you'd like a nice little home in the country with a picket fence and roses round the door with, uh, someone to fix dinner for you all. Not me. Oh, the wife part's all right, but I'd rather live in the city where something's going on. To me, nothing could be sweeter than just a little sweet or two. No, nothing could be sweeter than living on the avenue. High above the busy streets, happiness would be complete. If we could go out to eat, I'm not looking for home cooking. I don't want a cottage that has a waterfall in view. Going back to nature is dandy for a week or two. But after that, it's awful flat Raising kids is safe and sane But first I want to raise some cane So nothing could be sweeter Just a little sweet or two All my life I've waited for The one they say I'm fated for I hope and pray Each night and day The man for me will come my way But why oh why oh wherefore Does no one seem to care for me why won't any man see that I'm alone and fancy free? I can cook most any dish, even act quite devilish. Yet in vain I wish and wish for that he man who is the man. Faithful as a trilby, to him I always will be true. I'll be sentimental on any night from ten till two. I want a pet like Juliet. Where is there a Romeo who'll be so glad to see me? Oh, oh nothing, nothing could be sweeter than a sweet, complete, with happiness for two. What you say sounds awfully good to me, Mr. Smith. Tell me some more about your plans for the future. Well, I'm not always going to be in the Navy. When my time's up, I'm going to write for my master's papers and try to get a job as a captain of a freighter. Captain of a freighter? Mm-hmm. Gee, my dad was a captain. Yeah. Well, I'm going to be too someday. I got some money saved up. Not much, just a hundred bucks. But that'll help toward getting a freighter. It sure will. Okay, you two, break it up, break it up. Here's your child. <laughs> Thanks, Aunt Lavinia. Well, set it down. We can eat it. Well, lucky you. Call me when you're finished. I want to come back and count the things that aren't nailed down. <laughs> there, go ahead and eat. I hope you like my cooking. Me too. Cream chicken, biscuits, mashed potatoes, pie and coffee. Smells swell. Wouldn't it be nice if we could eat all our meals together like this? 
Yeah, but you ain't eating, sister. <laughs> I'm not hungry with you here and all. I've been thinking about you and that freighter. My dad used to say it would be awful lonesome on a freighter without me. Yeah? <laughs> His first mate used to say that, too. I mean, he used to say it would be awful lonesome on a freighter without his wife. Yeah. <laughs> the second mate. Gosh, you should have heard him talk about how lonesome it would be on a freighter without a wife. What'd you say, Mr. Smith? Hmm? Oh, nothing. Oh. Want some more coffee? Nope, I'm... I'm full up. Hey, Bilge, come on. It's time to go. I'll be right with you, Matt. Matt's waiting for me, baby. But you just got here. Can you come back soon? Ah, uh, no chance. We shove off tomorrow. Will you think about me when you're away? Write to me, maybe? Sure. Sure I will, sister. I'll, I'll think about you all the time. And I'll always remember tonight. The freighter and you. Mostly you. I hope it makes you happy, baby. It will. Sometimes. I don't get you. Sometimes I'm happy. Sometimes I'm blue. My disposition depends on you. I never mind the rain from the sky. If I can find the sun in your eyes, sometimes I love you, sometimes I hate you, but when I hate you, it's cause I love you, that's how I Sometimes I'm happy, sometimes I'm blue. My disposition just depends on you. I never mind the rain from the skies if I can find the sun in your eyes. Sometimes I love you, sometimes I hate you. But when I hate you, it's cause I love you That's how I am, so what can I do? I'm happy when I'm with you Sometimes I'm happy, sometimes I'm blue My disposition depends on you I never mind the rain from the sky if I can find the sun in your eyes Sometimes I love you Sometimes I hate you But when I hate you It's because I love you That's how I am So what can I do? To know what to do It's cause I'm happy Cause I'm happy Okay. Well, so long, baby. Wait, wait a minute. I've got something for you. It's right here in this drawer. Here. Here it is. Well, what do you know? A picture. <laughs> yeah. That's me. Under the hat. Just what I wanted. You'll come and see me when you get back? Sure, sure I will. I like to have a place in every port where I can drop in. <laughs> well, goodbye, Mr. Smith. So long, sister. Well... Aren't you going to kiss me goodbye? Hmm, must be slipping. Come to baby, Papa. No, come to Papa, baby. There. Now make that last till I get back. Oh, Mr. Smith. Goodbye. Oh, oh Mr. 
Smith. Aunt Lavinia. Aunt Lavinia. What, what happened? What happened? Oh, Aunt Lavinia. He just kissed me goodbye. Well, forever, I hope. No, he promised to come back. And oh, Aunt Lavinia, he wants to be captain of a freighter. Aunt Lavinia. No, whatever you're going to ask me, no. This coffee shop and, and that, that diamond pendant my mother left me, the one that the jeweler offered me $5,000 for, I could sell them and buy him a freighter. But he's a bum. That's all he is, nothing but a bum. He is not. He has money in the bank. He told me. He saved $100. Oh, $100. Oh, all right, so he's a bum with assets. But I'm not going to let you make a fool of yourself, Lulu. I'm just not going to let you do it. You can't stop me, Aunt Lavinia. That's how I am, so what can I do? I'm happy when I'm with you. And now, before the American Railroads bring you the second act of Hit the Deck, let's consider Thanksgiving Day, or rather, two Thanksgiving Days. The first one was more than 300 years ago, when a tiny band of immigrants, precariously hanging on to what was little more than a beachhead on the very edge of a wilderness continent, set aside a day in which to give thanks for the bounty and blessings which they had received in America. This week, another Thanksgiving Day will be observed, this time by a great and numerous people, securely occupying the whole of the vast continent, which was a wilderness and has now become one of the most richly productive countries of the earth. The pilgrims celebrated their first Thanksgiving Day with a dinner made up of whatever was right at hand near Plymouth, grain and vegetables from the garden patches, fruits and nuts from the surrounding forests, turkey shot wild in the woods. By contrast, most of the people who will celebrate Thanksgiving Day this week live a thousand miles and more from most of the food they will eat but they are able to draw to their dinner tables wherever they might live in America, the products of a whole continent, and not just on Thanksgiving Day, but on every day of the year. And what is true of food is typical of everything else we use. For here in America, the producer has the widest possible markets. The consumer has the broadest possible choice of sources of supply. In this great national competitive market, made possible by the continent-wide, low-cost transportation service of American Railroads. Now back to Hit the Deck, starring Francis Langford and your host, Gordon McRae. And here's Elvia Allman as Aunt Lavinia to go on with the story. I heard that song, there was more recruiting going on. Only this time, Bilge wasn't there. But a ship was expected that day, and as usual, Lulu had dragged me down to the dock to look for him. You don't suppose we missed Mr. Smith, do you, Aunt Lavinia? Lulu, why don't you face it? Trying to find a Smith in the Navy is like, like looking for one bean in Boston. I guess you're right. I've never been wrong where sailors are concerned. Six months he's been gone without even writing you a picture postcard. And still you insisted on selling your diamond pendant and your restaurant. What good did it do you to invest that money? Now you're just rich. <laughs> Sometimes I don't understand people. You say you know all about sailors. Sailors aren't people. <laughs> Aunt Lavinia, I know what I'll do. I'll give a dance. I'll invite every sailor in the Navy whose name is Smith. Captain Roberts will help me. He's an old friend of Dad's. Why, he may even let me give the party on his ship. Now, don't be so backward, honey. Why don't you ask President Truman if you can use his yacht? <laughs> now, don't poke fun at me, Aunt Lavinia. I'm going to find my Mr. Smith. I know I am. Oh, isn't this a wonderful dance? You said a faithful, baby. Why not, Smith? Fall in. Now listen to me, you guys. Miss Lulu Martin used her influence with the old man to throw this party aboard ship for us, Smith, so try to pretend you're gentlemen. Well, who ain't been behaving? You. You gotta cut out slapping dames on the back. Oh, they love it. Yeah, I know, but they gotta pretend they don't. So cut it out. 
All right, now you guys are dismissed. And the first guy that cuts in on me when I'm dancing with that redhead in the green dress gets 30 days in the break. Fall out! <laughs> Hello, sailor. Well, what cloud did you drop out of, Angel? My name's Toddy Gale. Shall we dance? Well, let's sit here and get acquainted first. See, it embarrasses me to put my arm around the girl until I've known her for at least 15 or 20 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, say, say, you're a pretty cute kid. You got any boyfriends? Just one. Deal me in, baby, and make it two. He's a Marine. I pass. <laughs> well, it's been nice knowing you. But he's in Japan. Uh, come to daddy. Well, how about having that dance now? I'd love to. We'll get to that later. Come on, baby, after we dance, I'll take you aft and demonstrate the ship's hold to you. Huh? Oh, oh, why, it's Lulu. Hey, you must be the Dan that's giving us here party. That's right. I was hoping he'd be here. You don't know where he is, do you, Matt? Last I heard, he was transferred to a destroyer. He c could be anywhere. Gosh. Poor kid. That's a tough break. Yeah, well, come on. We'll all have a glass of punch. Maybe that'll cheer you up, huh? No, oh, don't worry about me. The blues don't get me down. I got a secret formula. Yeah, you have? Sure. When I was a little girl down south, I used to hear the colored folks sing a certain song. And whenever I get the blues, I can almost hear them singing it. And it cheers me up. I'm recalling times when I was small and light and free to bleed. Glory, glory, Oh, folks pray. Everybody's swaying Loudly I chanted my prayer Glory, How we sang about the judgment morn And of Gabriel to on his In that sunny land of milk and honey, I had no complaints. While I thought of saints, so I say to all who feel forlorn, sing hallelujah, hallelujah, and you'll shoo the blues away. Sing hallelujah, hallelujah, get you through the darkest day. Satan lies awake and creating skies of gray. Sing hallelujah, hallelujah, helps to shoo the clouds away. Hallelujah, hallelujah, and you shoo the blues away. To shoo the clouds of gray away. Sing hallelujah, Sing hallelujah till the judgment day. Sing hallelujah, hallelujah. Now you two run along and dance. Don't worry about me. Okay. So long, Lulu. See you later, Lulu. Hiya, sister. Dancing tonight? Mr. Smith. Yeah, that's a safe guess. They tell me we're all Smiths here tonight. Hey, why are you staring at me, baby? What's eating you? Don't you... Don't you know me? Sure, baby, but I meet so many women. Don't you remember the girl in the restaurant? The cream chicken, the mashed potatoes, the... The Java? Hey, sure I remember you, honey. You bet I do. I knew you all the time. I was just kidding. Do you remember what happened when we... when we stood in the door saying goodbye? Sure. I'd been a pug-nosed pelican if I hadn't kissed you. You sure would have. I, uh... 
I did kiss you, didn't I? <sighs> that was me, all right. <laughs> hey, take a look at this on my sleeve. Three stripes and a wheel. Quartermaster, first class. Doing all right, huh? I'm going to write for my master's paper soon. Oh, Mr. Smith, I'm so proud of you. And you know, I think I like you better than I think I do. Oh, please do, Mr. Smith. Please do. Yeah, I'm sure I love you. Hey, what do you say we get spiced, huh? I dare you. You mean marry you? What do you say? I wished you'd ask me a little more romantic. Well, I, I haven't got a ring to give you, baby, but here. Wear this. Your identification tag. <laughs> Let me put it on you. There. That makes it official. We are now the future Mr. and Mrs. Bill Smith. Mrs. Bill Smith. What a beautiful name. Free life, sea life, although its lure is strong, would never hold me long. If you would only trust me, just me, though I know I have lots of things to live for, all those things I'd give for. The right to claim you holy solely. I want an armful, an armful of you. A cozy armchair that's comfy for two. The rosy fireside where troubles will fly up the flue. Though we're in Dallas or Kalamazoo. Our little palace will never be blue. You'll be my Alice in Wonderland all the day through. Beside the window you will look for me when day is done. You'll always have the latest book for me when I am weary. Maybe someday our dreams will come true. A tiny someone will say, how do you do? And he will seem like a sweet little armful of you. I want an armful, an armful of you. A cozy armchair that's comfy for two. A rosy fireside where troubles will fly up the flue. We'll fly up so high up, way up in the flue. Though we're in Dallas or Kalamazoo, our little palace will never be blue. You'll be my Alice in Wonderland all the day through. Lulu, I do mean you. Beside the window I will look for you. When day is done, mm -hmm. I'll always have the latest book for you. When you are weary, dearie, and maybe someday our dreams will come true. A tiny someone will say, How do you do? And he will seem like a sweet little armful of you. I want an armful, a great big armful of you. Oh, Mr. Smith, I'm so happy. When can we get married? Well, not for a while, baby. We shove off for China in the morning. China? Oh, no, I can't lose you so soon again. It'll be my last trip, baby. When I come back, we'll be married. Now I've got a big surprise for you. Remember that freighter you told me you wanted? Sure. Well, how would you like to sail on a freighter that I could get you? You could get me? Mm -hmm. You? Hey, wait a minute. Hold the phone. Are you the Martin Dame who's throwing this party? Yes, I'm her. I should have guessed it. Seeing you all dialed up like that, I should have known you had dough. Well, I'm not having any, sister. When I sail a ship, I'm going to be the boss. And when I love a girl, I do all the giving. But, Mr. Smith, I can't help it if I'm rich. That's your story, baby. But I don't have to get stuck with it. All right, United States, 
Midnight fall in. It's midnight. Party's over. Oh. Mr. Smith, please don't go. You heard what the Admiral said. So long. But you don't understand. I hate Oh, Mr. Smith. Mr. Smith. Mr. Smith. Oh, it's no use. It won't work. That's how I am, so what can I do? I'm happy when I'm with <laughs> While we're waiting for the third act of Hit the Deck, let's go back for a moment to that little talk we were having about Thanksgiving Day. Traditionally, this is the day to give thanks for the fruits of the earth harvested during the past season. This year, not only Americans, but people all over the world have special cause to be thankful. For this year, American farmers have harvested a record corn crop and near-record crops of wheat, of other grains, and of many staple fruits and vegetables. It is the job of American railroads to collect and distribute this bountiful harvest to wherever it is needed in this country and to our coastal ports for shipment overseas. This year's record crops have been handled faster and more efficiently than ever before. That's because of fine cooperation of shippers and receivers of freight in the prompt loading and unloading of cars. Yes, and because of the more efficient use by the railroads of the new equipment they have bought and the improvements they have made. Our country's high standard of living is based on two things, high production and widespread distribution. These are not mere accidents. They are products of our American institutions of human freedom and our system of enterprise and individual opportunity, of which both the American farmer and the American railroads are essential parts. Our show train will return in just a moment after a brief pause for station identification. Now for Act Three of Hit the Deck, starring Francis Langford and your host, Gordon McRae, with Elvia Allman as Aunt Lavinia. Well, sir, the next time I heard that song, we were in, yep, you guessed it, China. And me, what hates chop suey. You know why we were there, too. Lulu couldn't rest till she found that Bilge Smith. Somebody told us we could find him at a tea room called Ming Fu, so off we went. Come on, Rita. Bring up your tea and let's get out of here. Ah, oh, take your time, sailor. And for gosh sakes, cheer up. This is the first time I've ever been to Ming Fu's and didn't have fun. I ain't in the mood for fun. I got things in my mind. That gal again? Yeah. Look, Rita, is it wrong to marry for money? You mean there's some other reason? Wait a minute. <laughs> I don't mean for money. I mean to be a person that's got money. Are you telling me this dame you're nuts about is rich and you wonder if you should marry her? Either you're out of your mind or she's got a face like a rubber boot. There's nothing wrong with her face. It's beautiful. Here's a picture of her. You can see for yourself. Hey, she's cute. And you got sore because she had money. You wanted to be a big shot, didn't you? I'll bet you told her you wanted to buy the meals, even if you starved to death. Something like that. Sounds pretty dumb now that I think of it. <laughs> Rita, there's just one solution. After I mustered out of the Navy, I'm going back to San Diego and, and let her marry me. Hey, hey, what's all the excitement? Sounds like trouble. Come on. Come in, fall in. What's up, Chief? Bandits from the hill. So all the civilians stay right here. This is the only safe place in town. Right? Hey! This is the place, Aunt Lavinia. But why... There he is! Right. 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 Mr. Smith! Mr. Smith! Even if it is here, he can't hear you in all this racket. Mr. Smith! 
You wait here. I'm going after you him. You better stay here, girlie. There's bandit trouble out there, and this is where they've ordered civilians. Hey, hey, don't I know you? Me? I don't think so. <laughs> Gee, that's funny. I, I got it. I just saw a picture of you. A sailor showed it to me. He said he loved you, but he didn't want to marry you because you was rich. Mr. Smith, then it was him. How'd he look? What did he say? Well, he said he loved you, and as soon as he got out of the Navy, he was going to go back and marry you. Aunt Lavinia, he loves me. Well, here we go again. <laughs> I'm going back to San Diego and open up my restaurant again. Then I'll get rid of my money and be poor and wait for Mr. Smith. Be poor? You mean on purpose? If that's the way he wants me, that's what I'll be. Come on, Aunt Lavinia, we're off. If you ask me, you've been a little off ever since you met the guy. <laughs> Lavinia, isn't it wonderful to be home again? The restaurant hasn't changed a bit, has it? Yeah, neither has the Navy. It's still lousy with sailors. <laughs> Look, here comes another mob of them. <laughs> Hello, boys. It's good to see you all again. And since you're my first customers since I opened my place again, the Java's on the house. <laughs> Cup of Java, that is Java. Take a pleasure trip and navigate my way. Lulu is strong for you, and so's your coffee, too. It will even warm you quicker than a double shot of liquor when you've been on deck and skies are cold and gray. Fill up the cup, Lulu. We'll drink a toast to you. Oh, Lulu, a beautiful. you back. This place wasn't the same without you. Matt, gee, it's good to see you. Have some Java. Oh, thank you. I, I seen a notice you sent out to all the Smiths in the Navy, Lulu. Tell them you were back in the restaurant business again. Well, I wanted every Smith to know. So I wrote to all the Smiths in the Pacific Fleet. A lot of them have come to see me, but not the right one. Oh, maybe that's Mr. Smith now. If it is, Aunt Lavinia, you can tell him that I never want to see him again as long as I live. But don't make it sound like I'm mad. Hello? Yes? Oh, yes, it's for you, Matt. Oh, yeah, yeah, on the... Uh, oh, uh, hello? Yeah, yeah, this is Matt Smith. Yeah? Oh. Ah, oh, Toddy. No. Ah, oh, Toddy. Ah, oh, Toddy. Please. Oh, all right. That was Toddy. <laughs> she's she's going to get married this this afternoon. So she's going to get married, so what? Sure, Matt. Toddy's a sweet girl, but there are lots of others. At yeah, 3 o'clock, she's going to get married. At 3 o'clock. All right, so let her get married if she wants to. Well, she's going to marry me. <laughs> <laughs> well, Toddy's a lovely girl, Matt, and I know you'll be very happy. Yeah. Well, uh, she wants you to be her maid of honor, Lulu. She told me on the phone to tell you. Oh, I'd love to, Matt. You can make believe you're rich again, Lulu, and wear one of those dresses you bought when you sold the restaurant. Oh, yes, I can, can't I? I I'll go have a look, Artie, and see which one's in the best shape. Yeah, well, I guess I'd better be shoving off, Lulu. I'll, I'll drop by later and, and pick you up. Okay, Matt, bye. <laughs> Gee, I haven't been to a wedding in a long time. Oh, I wish... I wish... Hey, I Lulu! Lulu! Who is it? It's me, baby, Filch. 
Mr. Smith! Oh, well, come on in if you want to. I hardly recognized you with all that cold soot on your face. Well, I, I would have washed before I came, baby, but my ship just got in, and I thought if you liked me enough, a little dirt wouldn't hurt. <laughs> it doesn't. But you can wash. There's soap and a towel on that basin. Okay. I was down in Buenos Aires when I got your notice about opening up this joint. You out of the Navy? Yeah. I've been out for, for weeks now. Hey, how'd you come to lose your dough? I don't know. It's just gone. All of it? I haven't got a dime. Except what I earn here. Well, I'm here to take care of you now, baby. Does that mean you love me? Sure I love you. Why'd you think I'd come over here so fast, without washing? Oh, Mrs. Smith. Hey, Lulu, I got the promise of a ship. A ship? Yeah, a coal... What, what kind? A coal barge. A coal barge? Well, yeah. Of course, it isn't as fancy as a freighter, and she sails to Portland instead of the South Seas, but she's a ship. And if we were in love, we'd almost feel like it was the president's yacht. What do you say, baby? Somehow, I don't feel like sailing on a coal barge. Oh, so you're going to hi-hat me, huh? Okay, I know when I'm not wanted. Just as you say, Mr. Smith. I got used to getting along without you. Yeah? Yeah. Oh, Lulu, I'm crazy about you. Honest, I am. I never once took out one of them Buenos Aires names without thinking of you. <laughs> oh, Aunt Lavinia, take those dresses out of here. Take them out. Never mind taking them out. Do these fancy dresses belong to you, Lulu? Yes, but So I... you're not broke after all, huh? Okay. Well, like I told you before, baby, I'm not living off any rich wife. Mr. Smith, please, you've got to believe me. I haven't a cent. I signed it over to a trust company. Well, then it's still yours with a string on it. No, I can't touch it. It's being held in trust for someone. Who? Oh, tell him to go take a jump, Lulu. Go on, tell him. Who's it being held in trust for? I can't tell you till we're married. So long, baby. No, don't go. I'll tell you. Don't look at me. Well, it's... It's being held in trust for my first baby. What? If his or her name is Smith. Lulu! Hold him till I get a minister and a gun. He may want to shove off any minute. <laughs> Sing hallelujah, hallelujah, and you'll shoo the blues away. When cares pursue ya, hallelujah, get you through the darkest day. Satan lies awaiting and creating. But hallelujah, hallelujah, to shoo the clouds of gray away. Sing hallelujah to the judgment day. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. This is Gordon McRae giving a special vote of thanks to our guest star, Miss Frances Langford, and to Elvie Allman, Jim Backus, Sandra Gould, Sheila Stevens, and Barney Phillips for their fine performances in our production of Hit the Deck by Herbert Fields, with lyrics and music by Leo Robin, Clifford Gray, and Vincent Humans, and adapted for radio by Ed Gardner and Bill Demling. Well, next week, our star-studded show train will arrive on the same tracks and at the same time. On board will be Nadine Connor and Rudy Valley to join me in bringing you Sigmund Romberg's New Moon with our orchestra under the direction of Carmen Dragon and the chorus under the direction of Mr. Norman Lubar. All aboard! Well, it looks as though we're ready to pull out, so until next week, goodbye. And remember, during the coming week, as always, the American railroads will provide for you the dependable, low-cost transportation which is so essential to the American way of living. Yeah.